this time, At this we're time, we're going to move into our, our family altar, altar time. I do have, I do a, have a couple of prayer requests, requests and ask that, ask that you be diligently praying about. about. Um, last, last night, night about 5 p.m., uh, Alan, Alan Acker went to, uh, went to be with the Lord, with the Lord um, um, passed away, away after, after a brief stay at the hospital, the hospital um, battling, battling COVID. COVID. Um, um, so and so please pray, please pray for Sybil and the rest of the family as she she faces New steps, new steps forward. forward. Uh, without, the without the love of her life, life she put a very, put a very uh, beautiful, beautiful uh, message, message to him on Facebook. On Facebook. Um, but um, but Paula, Paula and Eric are here uh, with Sybil. Uh, but it's just going to take some time. Um, and so if you want to send a note of um, prayer, condolences, I know it would be appreciated. Uh, just pray for them. Also, uh, we got a, a note from Deb, um, Joe's brother, Tony. Had a massive stroke uh, and is still dealing with uh, that. So uh, pray for the family. Um, pray for Tony, uh, just that he'll be healed, uh, that the Lord will work good out of a dire situation. Um, and also, just keep in mind, um, I know it's kind of on the back of our minds now and kind of we don't see it as forefront anymore, but uh, we have left... Uh, the yellow and blue up because there's still a war raging uh, in Ukraine uh, and just continue to lift the people of Ukraine up and that the Lord will intercede uh, because we still need a miracle. But let's go to the Lord in prayer this morning. Um, maybe uh, you need to come to the altar and spend some time or stand, raise your hands, whatever it may be, uh, but let's find a posture of prayer this morning. Lord, we've we come into your house expecting to encounter you. And Lord, we know that you are here in our midst. And Lord, some of us have walked into this place with uh, clouds of, of darkness, of overwhelming emotions. From the loss of a loved one. Lord, I pray for Sybil this morning. Bring comfort and peace to her. Lord, I pray for Mark as he continues to grieve and mourn the loss of a mom. Lord, and I pray for uh, the people of Ukraine. <laughs> We continue to see reports of just how devastating it is. But Lord, in the midst of those, we see you working through your people, through your church. Lord, we need a miracle to stop this violence, to stop the destruction. And Lord, we've got a number of people dealing with sickness and medical issues. And, and Lord, I pray for Tony this morning. Touch his body. Well, we don't know, I don't know the extent of what's going on, but Lord, I know he needs you to intervene. And Lord, be with the family. Provide all that they need. And Lord, anybody else that is uh, dealing with uh, just pain, frustration, uh, anybody waiting on a surgery. And Lord, I pray that as we uh, go in our daily lives, that we will find time to encounter you. Lord, not just in the still moments of prayer, but as we go about our life, the life that you've led us to, that as we encounter people, that we will be light bringers, that the love of Christ will so flow out of us. That the people will see your goodness. That lives will be transformed through our testimony of who you are. And Lord, I know that is a, a great and bold request to pray. Because Lord, that, that is, uh, it's scary when we set ourselves in your hands and say, here I am, Lord. 
send me. And Lord, I pray for anybody that's dealing with the stresses of this world. Uh, they are far. Uh, there's a bunch of them. All the things that come at us from each direction. Uh, Lord, may we stand firm in you and trust that you are walking with us despite all the things going on in this world. And Lord, let us rest this morning. We've come to you, we've come into your house on this Sabbath, and may it be a time of renewal, of encouragement. May we be filled to overflowing. Lord, thank you for meeting us here in this space. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Well, as has been mentioned, we are going to focus on prayer over the next few weeks. If you have not gotten a prayer journal, I encourage you uh, to get one. I think we're out on the table, but I will print you one. Uh, it looks like this. Uh, it's for the next five weeks or so. Uh, there's a daily devotional with a time of response in it uh, to get us oriented, praying specifically for our church, our district, our region, uh, which includes Canada and the USA. There's also a copy of uh, Holiness Today, uh, just some great articles uh, talking about the church, talking about prayer, talking about faith. Uh, I encourage you to grab one of those. Uh, also, we took down our These 40 Days display where uh, lots of notes were written on what was the Lord doing in our time of Lent and, and how did we see Him working. And, and I don't, I don't want to throw these away. I'm going to put them on the front bench and after service, if you want to come grab one and take it and just... Keep it as a reminder. It doesn't have to be yours. I mean, you can go through and find yours. But keep it somewhere you can see it as a reminder of God's faithfulness, that God is at work. And uh, because I know there's going to be times when uh, we go, Lord, where are you? Uh, I read a book since early on in my ministry called Talking in the Dark. And it's a book about prayer. And it's and it's a book that specifically talks about praying even when it doesn't make sense, even when we're overwhelmed with all that's going on in the world. Because prayer involves mystery. When we start talking about the divine, when we start talking about God, we can only know so much. I have a tendency to be a know-it-all, but I can tell you this, I don't know much when it comes to God. I really don't. Like, I, I think I do. I think I've, I've got quite a bit of theology knowledge. I've got, I've got some grasp on some things. But when it really comes to an, our understanding of who God is, there's a big chasm between who he is and what we understand. Is that a fair statement? So when we encounter the divine, we're, we're stepping into this thing called faith, which involves mystery. And so this book called Talking in the Dark is really about understanding that mystery, that, that thing that doesn't make sense is okay. And I'm going to try to light the Christ candle. Uh, I forgot to pull it up a little further. Uh, but when our darkness, whenever the world kind of comes and surrounds us, uh, the light of Christ is not extinguished. So even though we may feel like we're talking in the dark, we're encountering a God whose light shines constantly, forever and ever. And this morning, our passage is going to come from Matthew chapter 6, starting in verse 5. So during Lent, we actually looked at quite a bit of the Sermon on the Mount. We didn't really get into chapter 6, though, and, and there's a little passage here on prayer. Verse 5 says, And whenever you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners, so that they may be seen by others. Truly I tell you, they have received their reward. But whenever you pray, go into a, your room and shut the door and pray to your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will re reward you. When you are praying, do not heap up empty phrases as the Gentiles do, for they think that they will be heard because of their many words. 
Do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you ask him. So the first thing I want to point out is it, Jesus doesn't say, if you pray, if you happen to find time and pray, this is what you should do. If you pray, right? No, he says, when. When you pray. Prayer is going to be something that is involved in the walk of a Christian. But we often assume prayer is natural. That it comes as easy as breathing. You didn't have to learn how to breathe. When you came out of the womb, you went, <gasps> it's a natural response. And, wh- and what do they want to hear in that, that room? What's the first thing you want to hear? Yeah. Ah, screaming and crying, because what does that tell you? The baby's breathing. Breathing is something that is uh, just natural. We don't have to be taught. It's intrinsic. But another thing that we, we often say, oh, prayer should be like breathing. It should just be natural. It should happen without even thought. But when we really start thinking about prayer, maybe we need to orient it that it's natural in the way that talking is natural. Because imagine you've got a young child, and, oh, they say their first word. And what do we all hope it is? For me, ah, dada, come on. I want to be that. And the moms usually hope for, oh, mama. But if your kid says that first word, and, and hopefully it's not, no. But when your kid says that first word, you don't go, all right, you spoke, it's over, it's done. Right? We don't leave it there, because imagine if the child's only word is no. I don't want to deal with that. No, but we have expectations that they have to learn and talk more and more. It's natural for them to talk, that's how we communicate, it's how we interact, but it's not something that just happens. We have to do work. Some of us need even more help. And Tucker's had to have a, a speech therapist to help him pronunciate some words. But then again, I look at mine the way I talk, and I'm like, maybe I should have. <laughs> but talking, it's natural, but we have to learn it. And prayer is the exact same way. We have to learn, and we have to be taught. Jesus taught his disciples. And we're not going to focus on that this morning, because just after what we read, Jesus goes into the Lord's Prayer and says, when you pray, pray like this. And we're not going to focus on that in this series, but there is a great series that I think we might do in the fall over the Lord's Prayer. But Jesus told them, you you have to practice. It's not something that comes naturally. And for me, has anyone ever taken one of those spiritual gifts inventories? Like you take a little quiz and it says, hey, you might be, you know, a person of discernment. You might be a person of prayer. Some of these spiritual gifts type things. And man, I got to be honest. Prayer is always lower on my list. It is something I have to work at. And I've had to trust that people ahead of me will teach me, uh, that I will put in the practice and the discipline. And so we're going to watch a video this morning. It's meant to be funny. Please take it that way. Okay, we'll talk about it after, but this is someone who who needs to learn to pray, and she asks, will you help me pray? Teach me to pray. Um, Errors with his biblical knowledge. (laughs) pretty accurate there's slight things in there that it's like oh you know Jesus did say he was going to send the comforter and the comforter is going to come and but I don't remember those stories being meshed together that way where we see Jonah and Noah and Peter all in the water at the same time Uh, but this young lady asked Medea so that's a character uh, a guy by the name of Tyler Perry created a bunch of movies has this over-the-top character Medea uh, they're quite funny, um, if you ever want to check any of those out. That, that comes from a movie called I Can Do Bad All By Myself. Uh, but she asks, you know, hey, I, I'm dealing with this crisis. She's in the darkness, right? She's, she's lost the one caregiver, the one person who loves her in her life, and she's got these siblings, and she's stressed, and she doesn't know what to do. And, and so she's like, I, I know that, that my grandmother used to tell me, pray about it. 
but she just told me to do it. She didn't show me how to do it. So she just told me that I'm supposed to do it, but so can you teach me how to pray? And then probably the wrong person to ask. (laughs) Medea got off on all sorts of tangents, uh, but Medea did get in right in the middle of there, said it's just talking to God. I don't think we need in Jesus' name to put a stamp on it, but just talking to God. A few years back, when I was a youth pastor in Oklahoma City, we had uh, a Wednesday night group, and we're sitting there, and, and we're, we're having a conversation about prayer. What does it look like to pray? And, and one of the teens, and he looks at us, he goes, oh, you know, it's easy to pray. It's just like sending a text to God. That's all you got to do. Just talk to him. That's it. And I was like, well, yes, but I don't know if it's just that simple. Because I think one of the things that we do with prayer is so often we talk to God and we talk at God. And that's what we just keep doing. We just keep going boom, 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 boom. And we never go. Does quiet bother you? That was a whole like five seconds. We're not very good at being quiet. And so a lot of times our prayer time just becomes throwing things at God. Why, 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 why? Yet we never rest to hear a response. That talking becomes one way. Sherry asked the kids, hey, what's what's some ways you interact with a friend? And do you talk to them? Maybe you are the quiet, reserved friend, and you have a friend that's the one that's always talking. But talking goes two ways. We have to speak, and we have to listen. And I think for us, when we talk about prayer time, we miss out on the listening portion. And Jesus tells his disciples, hey, it's not about big, pompous prayers. Because if it was... Like I said, prayer doesn't come naturally to me. There's some people that I listen pray, and I'm like, oh my goodness, why can't I do it like that? They have a a gift from the Holy Spirit that maybe I don't. But that doesn't keep me from praying. But I have to be aware that it's not really about how much I pray, how much I talk how many words I speak or where and what presence I am. Because Jesus tells us, hey, why don't you go back to your space, to your room, and pray? Not make a show of it. Do you have a designated space to pray? Does anybody do devotionals in the exact same spot? Does anybody have one of those? A couple of us? My father-in-law at his house that he had in Bethany... And there was some, a staircase, and underneath was a closet. What do you call that? His prayer closet. I bet he spent a lot of hours in that thing. The only time I think I ever went in there was for hide and seek, but, you know. <laughs> but he had a designated space for prayer, for this time set aside to be with the Lord. Because for us, in the first uh, devotional today, it kind of hits it on the nose that a lot of times when we start talking about prayer, we, we all go, oh yeah, we should pray. We really should. And then we move on. Because it says this, in the hustle and bustle of our lives, we know we should pray. However, it is very easy to fill our days and hours with other tasks. When prayer becomes an if Instead of a win, we will find ourselves disconnected from God, from our neighbor, from ourselves, and from the world around us. What we need desperately is for those connections to be restored and renewed. Prayer is one avenue for us to be made whole. Today, let's make prayer a priority as we seek to be Christ's disciples. I don't want to tell you this morning to to add to your burdens of the week. But I want to talk to you this morning to maybe reorient some priorities. 
uh, this morning uh, in our prayer time, which plug for that, 9.15, right over here, every Sunday, we're there. But Ruth and I were talking about how she's, she's like, I have to do it in the morning. If I don't get up and get the day started with the Lord, man, by the evening, I'm toast. But Doris, when do you do your prayer time? In the evening, right before bed. So there's not one cookie cutter way to spend time with the Lord. It's, it can go into your schedule, but guess what? We have to find the time and we have to make it intentional. And so when we start talking about prayer, I'm going to ask you that this week you find some time each and every day. And I would encourage you to find time that is set. Make it the same time each and every day for this next week. And spend some time praying. And, and here's what I'm going to ask you to do. Don't worry about all the words. And as we look at prayer over the next few weeks, we're going to see how the Lord's taught us and, and how the Spirit helps us pray. But this week, what I want you to look at is just spend time. Don't worry about those words. And, and is there anybody that's not good with silence? Like, for real, I mean, I, I think about me. I've grown up in an age where I've had access to electronics to put out music and things very easily and readily my entire life. Like even now, if we were to do nothing, you can still have the fan noise, the whirring of things. But so often, silence is uncomfortable. But I want you to take some time this week and in your prayer, just rest. You don't even have to close your eyes, but just sit in the presence of the Lord. Listen for God to speak. For most of us, it's not an audible voice that we're going to hear. But it's going to be a movement and a stirring in our hearts and our souls saying, I am here. Be comforted. Know that I have your good in mind. So the Lord, when we talk about spending time with him, I think sometimes we want to do it all at once. So a couple months ago, I decided I was going to work out again. And I did really well for about three weeks. And then guess what happened? Life. Mainly COVID. I'm in a toe fungus. Ugh. TMI, sorry. <laughs> but do you know how many times I've been to the gym since? Because what happens, I think, is sometimes we want it all at once. And so I have plans to go back to the gym this week. And I'm going to expect to be able to lift and run and do all the things I did at the end of the last time I worked out. But you know what's going to happen? I'm going to hurt myself <laughs> and I'm going to get worn out. Because I want it all. And I think for your prayer life, let's temper some of those expectations. Set aside 10 minutes tomorrow this afternoon, this evening, whenever. Ten minutes. Don't, don't commit to an hour. Because guess what? That first day, you set that hour aside and you, you get eight minutes into it and you're like, okay, what do I do? And then the next day, you're like, okay, but I got this to do. And, and all of a sudden, that hour is discouraging and you're doing nothing. And then pretty soon, you look at it and you go, man, when was the last time I talked to the Lord? Maybe it's like Medea. The last time you saw it was when there was lights in your rear mirror because the cop was pulling you over. Although I do have a question. Never mind. I'm not going to ask that. <laughs> do cops traffic stops here? Because I don't see it ever. And I'm very thankful for that. But I just, I mean, I look at it. I mean, in the States, everywhere. I'm very thankful for it. Uh, <laughs> 
but take some time and don't make it manageable. So set 10 minutes aside to spend time in prayer. Find a passage of scripture that you absolutely love. Go back to Psalm 30 maybe uh, where it just says, I will praise you forever, forever and ever, Lord. And then sit in the silence. Be willing to say, all right, speak to me, Lord. And then do that again the next day and the next day. And when we come back together next Sunday, let's have a conversation about, man, guess what the Lord did this week in my time of quiet? Because I I gave him some designated space in the hustle and bustle of my life. Because I know it doesn't matter what season of life you're in. From a child to retirement, we're all busy. Right, Craig? Craig? If you don't know, Craig's newly retired, and I think he's busier than he used to be. <laughs> but let's find some time this week. Maybe come back to this passage, Matthew 6, where Jesus is telling us, hey, when you pray, just spend some time with me. Come into my room. Talk to the Father. Let him speak to you. Because the Father knows. Be comforted in that. So this morning, I'm going to pray for us. Our praise team is going to come back. Find that time to pray this week. Find the journal. If you don't have it, come ask me for it. I'll print it off. Before you even leave today, I'll go in and get it printed. Because I want you to have this. It won't take you long to do this each and every day. It might be enough uh, to set aside that time. But let's pray together each and every day this week. And let us come back with a testimony of what the Lord's doing in that quiet time. If you'll bow your heads, let us pray this morning. Lord, you gave us one of the greatest examples of what it means to pray through your son, Jesus. Jesus was a great example of uh, finding that space, finding that time to, to be alone with you to talk to you, to listen to you. And so, Lord, as we go this week, and and we may look at our calendars and see uh, how busy it is, all the things that we have coming up, but, Lord, uh, give us the diligence, the, the faithfulness to commit a few minutes of time with you. And, Lord, may that expand and may that grow, but, but first, Lord, let us be committed, disciplined to the task of prayer and communing with you. So, Lord, as we go, uh, may we hear from you. As we pray, may we find time to rest in the silence so that we can hear you speak, that we can be comforted by you, that we can be encouraged by you, that we can be emboldened by you. But, Lord, uh, just continue to lay on our hearts just a desire to spend time with you. And as we come back together in a week's time, that we will have just testimony after testimony of the good work that you did in those quiet moments. And Lord, it may not be big and bold, and, uh, but it's those things where we've seen you work, that you've worked good out of those things that weighed heavy on us. And so, Lord, as we enter into the mystery of prayer, this this divine interaction that you've called us to, and with the help of your Spirit, Lord, may we find the heart of you, that you so love us and want relationship with us. And, Lord, as we spend time with you and set our relationship with you, that our relationship with others just gets better and better. So, Lord, go with us this week. May we encounter you wherever we are and in whatever time we set aside. Lord, we love you, and in Jesus' name we pray. All his people said, amen.